Hey guys, this is Adam Carswell with Liberty Real Estate Fund, joined by our CEO, Michael Flight, and we are preparing for a webinar right around the corner for you. First of all, before we get to the webinar talk, I do want to say, Michael, I haven't seen you yet this year. Happy 2021. How are you doing? Happy 2021 to you and goodbye 2020. So it's off to the races. We are excited about what the possibilities are. I like your recent post about the Spanish flu and they had the, all the women drinking some alcohol. That was pretty good. The roaring 20s, man. After the Spanish flu, it was the roaring 20s. And that's what we're looking forward to. 2021, all the way through 2029. A Liberty Real Estate Fund webinar is coming your way, ladies and gentlemen. This January, right around the corner, the 14th at 12 p.m. Pacific time. And it's called, What Are the Top 7 Net Lease Secrets? And Michael, before we get into some teasers here, what makes you the person to come to to talk about this topic anyway? Uh, that's a good question because I don't know why anybody would listen to me. But most <laughs> importantly, um, I have, you know, just through attrition, been in the real estate business, especially the commercial real estate business, and most particularly working with net leases since 1986. And so we have done everything from malls to strip centers, to power centers, all the way on down to portfolios of net lease properties. So we bought net lease properties, we've developed net lease properties, we've sold net lease properties, uh, we've 1031 exchanged net lease properties. So I'm not saying that we are the end all the be all, but I do think that there is a void of education out there uh, in the net lease property space. A lot of people don't know about it. Uh, I run into so many people that have never even heard about it. So that's why I'm really excited to, to talk about it a little bit because um, net leases are you know, probably one of the finest uh, real estate investments you can do, especially if you don't want, really want to like, have all the hassles of owning real estate. So we can get into a little bit of that, but uh, that's you know, why I really want to educate people and I want people to know more about net leases because I think the more people hear about net lease properties, the more they're going to say it. That makes a lot of sense. And that looks like a great opportunity that I would want to get into. Right. And, and real quick on that, too. I mean, I think you, you kind of identified there's not a whole lot of uh, education out there on this topic. Thankfully, you're doing things like this webinar. You're writing a book, uh, a lot of different things that you're working on. I'm working with a friend of mine on a podcast. Uh, have you ever heard of Adam Carswell? He's like the voice of Liberty. He's the co-host of that podcast. And he's, he's a good guy. Really phenomenal uh, as a co-host. He really carries the show for me. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to meet him someday. It's, uh, the, the website you can go to check out what Mike was talking about is triplenet.re. Correct, Michael? That's our preferred URL. Yes, triplenet.re. So as in triple net real estate. All right. I love it. And so as far as real estate is concerned too, Michael, I mean, just starting from square one, why real estate in the first place? Well, you know, I think the, the biggest thing is most people think about investments and immediately they go to the stock market. They immediately they they get a broker or they get a mutual fund and everybody tells them to get a mutual fund. Um, and everybody tells them to put their 401k into the stock market. And the stock market, in my estimation, is just gambling. And then there's a lot of people that have said, oh, well, the new asset class is cryptocurrency. You should go into cryptocurrency. Well, there's you know, uh, some good parts about cryptocurrency, and there's some very scary parts about cryptocurrency. It's a very young industry. And so what I really like about real estate is it is the not an alternative asset class. It is the world's original asset class. I mean, before there was stock markets, stock markets are a new invention. Before there was bonds, before there was all that type of stuff, it was people buying real estate or, you know, in thousands of years ago, people were fighting over real estate, you know? And so they, you know, would take huge armies and they'd say, that looks like a good piece of land. And instead of making an offer on it, the Whoever was bigger and badder, you know, ended up owning that real estate. So that was the way the world worked. And then, you know, we've refined it a little bit. So now, you know, you can buy things and own things. But 
Um, real estate is absolutely the world's most proven asset class. Uh, you know, we've got records going back hundreds of years and real estate continues to go up. Real estate has always been an inflation hedge. And we know right now, what is the Fed doing, Adam? <laughs> exactly what you just said, minus the hedge, which is inflation. I think the last money bomb dropped was what 900 billion dollars just pumped right into the economy yeah they're, they're not even bothering like printing it anymore they're just like you know there's like a, a giant like sewer pipe and they've just opened it up and it's just like flooding money into it so what that means is all those dollars are going to make our real estate go up in value so and if also we can put debt on that then you know we're taking those dollars and, and shorting the dollar with the debt um, because the money that we have to repay the debt back with is worth less. So it's a perfect thing. It's a beautiful thing. But um, the, the benefits of real estate are, you know, uh, especially cash flowing real estate is you, it's consistent uh, income, it's regular cash flow, uh, it generates wealth and it preserves wealth. So um, most large family fortunes, most large fortunes, most family offices, and most institutional investors uh, will put a large portion of their assets into real estate because it, you know, is a preservation of that wealth. And um, what we like about it better than gold is gold might not have any counterparty risk and gold might also be an inflation hedge, but gold has no cash flow. So uh, real estate is a tangible asset. It's a hard asset. It's, you know, you got the security of that, especially investing in the U.S. Um, you know, it's still one of the safest. Uh, it is the largest real estate market in the world. It's probably one of the most liquid real estate markets in the world because everybody goes into a transaction and most of the time there's no surprises. Uh, you know, we have title policies. We have, you know, I, I mean, it's not to say that you're not going to run into problems, but, uh, you know, in, in terms of, you know, well-rounded real estate markets, uh, you can't beat, you know, the U.S. And so with it being so big, it is like 50 different countries. So each state has its own individual unique little things. Um, but the other great thing about real estate is you can get leverage. Um, so with stocks, it's, it's very hard to get the type of... Uh, mortgages and, you know, uh, buying with borrowed money. Uh, so real estate is a unique asset in that you can mortgage it. And again, uh, in the U.S., we have some of the widest, most liquid, um, all kinds of alternative opportunities to finance real estate. It's really, you know, and they're coming up with new ones every year. So it's, um, you know, just the magic of capitalism and free markets. Yes. I mean, hey, a lot of fantastic benefits about real estate. Thank you for going through them there with us, Michael. You actually leaked out one of our seven, seven secrets just now. Um, so I'm going to ask you if you could go back and kind of rehash that one. And then also for teaser purposes, you know, we, we told everyone we got two secrets coming their way today. So again, rehash that first one and then also let us know what secret number two out of the seven is. All right. Well, secret number one is real estate is not an alternative asset class. Real estate is the original asset class. So it is the world's most proven asset class. And secret number two is mailbox money. Now, you might want to know what mailbox money is, don't you, Adam? I do. And actually, I want to, I'm really excited for you to share this one because, um, I think across most of commercial real estate or even investing, the phrase mailbox money comes up a lot, but the way you define it when it comes to net lease is even more, I would say, mailbox money than you might get managing a, a multifamily property or, you know, single family uh, residence. Go ahead and, and, and define for us what you mean by mailbox money. Yes, you, you hit on a few things. Like most people, when they uh, learn about real estate investing, they, you know, and everybody since 2000 that I have met, except for like one or two people, all got into real estate because of Robert Kiyosaki. So, and they, once they decide that they've read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and they want to get into real estate, then they're like, okay, I'm going to do like single family house rentals. I'm going to do single family fix and flips. And I can tell you, I've done that. 
uh, and the next progression is, or they might start off with a smaller apartment building. I can tell you, I've done that. We've also done large apartment buildings. We've done condo conversions. So I know the difference between uh, the residential stuff and the uh, commercial net lease stuff. I can also tell you that I have uh, operated and owned office buildings and we've had other uh, management intensive. So for the most part, the mailbox money part of the net leases is, is that it is probably the least amount of work that you can do in owning a property. So the great thing is, is if you get a triple net lease and a triple net lease means that the tenant pays for the taxes, the tenant pays for the insurance and the tenant pays for the maintenance. So you can remember that with the acronym TIM, T-I-M, taxes, insurance, and maintenance. That's are the, those are the three triple nets, okay? So let's go back to what we were just talking about. And Adam is always talking smack about these multifamily guys because they're all over the place. <laughs> oh, multifamily's the best. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, but let's look at it. So if we are looking at, and I owned a, a uh, multifamily apartment building in the Chicago area, me and my partners did. And we probably had a gross income on it of around $200,000. And we are currently underwriting a property in Florida. It's a CVS. And this thing is beautiful. It's right next to the beach. I mean, you can walk across, you know, the main highway and boom, you're on the beach in Florida. What's better than that? Okay. So number one, pride of ownership. I'd rather have that than be shoveling sidewalks and uh, an apartment building in Chicago right now. But so you've got both $200,000 gross income, okay? With the apartment, you're going to have a vacancy factor. Now, you're going to have a vacancy factor with the single tenant triple net at least, but it's either going to be 100% occupied or it's going to be 100% vacant. So that's where you, you have to know a little bit about, and we're going to get into to some of that. But anyways, if you've got CVS, CVS is a major corporation. It is... Um, as we like to say, bonds wrapped in real estate, because you've got a billion dollar corporation. CVS is not only a pharmacy chain, it also owns Aetna Health Insurance. It also does mail order pharmacy. It also does all kinds of other specialty pharmacy. So this is one of the largest companies in the world, okay? So you've got that on your lease. When I had my apartment building, who did I have on my lease? I had people that were excellent people, some of them. And then I had some dirt bags that didn't pay their rent or paid their rent, you know, not on time. Uh, they, you know, some of them were excellent and they kept, you know, wonderful apartment and cleaned up after themselves and everything. And some of them were just slobs and pigs. And, you know, uh, actually uh, the, the, the biggest problem uh, that I had in three different apartments was a, uh, you know, people dealing drugs out of them. And, you know, some of these were in nice areas, but it's like, you know, uh, you got that problem all the time. So uh, the only drug dealing going on in a CVS is legal pharmacy prescriptions. So we could, you know, debate the pros and cons about that, but I'll take, you know, the CVS kind every day. But anyway, let's get back to it. $200,000. You've got You've got to pay the real estate taxes on that apartment. You've got to pay for the insurance on that apartment. You got to do maintenance and repairs. Every time a tenant leaves, you got to repaint, you got to clean up, you got to fix up and all the rest of the stuff. Um, if the tenant is an idiot and doesn't know how to work a toilet, which there's a lot of them out there, it seems, it's like, you know, you either have to go over there and plunge the toilet or rod the toilet, or you have to have somebody, you know, go over there and, and rod the toilet. Who wants to do that? Okay. With net leases, it's no toilets, no tenants, no termites, okay, boom. And so uh, on an average apartment property, uh, our real estate taxes in Illinois are really here, but I figure you get a net income of about $145,000. With the, the net lease property, uh, you out of a $200,000 gross income, the tenant is paying the taxes. If the taxes go up, the tenant pays the increase in taxes. The tenant is paying the insurance. The tenant is insuring the building. The tenant is insuring for fires. The tenant is insuring if somebody slip and falls in the parking lot. I mean, what's not to love about that? 
and then the tenant does the repairs and maintenance. So you want to make sure that you have a net, net, net lease, okay? Because if you just have a net, net lease, then you're responsible for the roof, you're responsible for other things, and you don't want that. You want the tenant responsible for everything, okay? And so the only type of, there will be some property management, but your property management will be making sure that the tenant has um, uh, a, a contract for maintenance on the roof, the tenant has a contract for maintenance on the, um, and so you just call them up and say, you know, send your proof of uh, maintenance contract for maintaining the HVAC, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Uh, you say, please send over your proof of insurance. And so they'll send over an insurance certificate and it'll name you as an additional insured. And so let's say that you've got like $5,000 of property management fees, because you might want somebody to do that. So the other thing is the property management fee is going to be lower. Uh, in an apartment, there's a lot more management intensive. So it's going to be, I've seen them as high as 6% in, you know, certain like, shall we say less than desirable neighborhoods on down to, to three to 4%. Um, and with the property management on the net lease properties, it's probably going to be about two to two and a half percent. Okay. So that's $5,000. So side-by-side -side comparison do you really want all this hassle with all these like, you know, residential stuff, or do you want the nice, beautiful Florida CVS? Okay. And you're getting $195,000 in net income here. You're getting $145,000 of net income over here and a bunch of hassles. Mailbox money, baby. There it is. That's the real mailbox money guys. So um, if you would like more of that, and what I mean is uh, Michael is just getting started. He's just getting warmed up. I'm surprised you, you, you kind of went a little bit beyond the two secrets. Thank you very much. Um, we've got more coming your way January 14th, as I mentioned, at 12 p.m. Pacific, a Liberty Real Estate Fund exclusive webinar. There's a registration link below. Go ahead and check that out. Click it. It's free. And if you want to know the other five secrets of net lease real estate, uh, Michael is your guy. Michael, any closing words before we end our session here today? Well, we believe in giving you a lot of value. We value your time. So we just want you to know that if you decide to come to our webinar and we really would like you to come and, and learn more about net lease real estate, we are going to give you some stuff that's going to be actionable material. Well, well said and, and very true. I mean, actionable is probably the most important thing considering uh, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of information like this out there. So Thank you for uh, opening the floodgates, I guess you could say, of this knowledge. I'm sure it's going to make its way through the marketplace effectively. One more time, everyone, thank you for joining us here today. I'm Adam Carswell with Liberty Real Estate Fund, joined by our CEO today, Michael Flight. And we will be going live on January 14th at 12 p.m. Pacific for the webinar presentation, What Are the Top 7 Net Lease Secrets? Look forward to seeing, seeing you there. Registration link is below. Thank you. Take care.